Hello, I'm JW. This time I'm going to have a look at some lockout equipment, or tagout as it's also called. And this is the sort of stuff you need to use anytime you're going to be switching off a circuit and then going and working on that circuit. You need to ensure that someone else isn't going to just switch that on because they want to make a cup of tea or whatever. And this is the sort of stuff that every electrician should already own. If you don't own any, then you need to get down the shops and buy some right away because you should be using it pretty much on every single job you're going to. So let's have a look at some examples and how it might be used. Now when you go to a house or a factory or a shop or pretty much anywhere and you're going to work on an electrical circuit, you're going to have to turn off the particular circuit in question because of course working live is not only completely dangerous and unacceptable, it's also probably against the law if you care to read the electricity at work regulations. So switching off the circuit is pretty much a given thing. So uh, let's say it was this particular one here. Of course you would need to go and check that that was the correct circuit and all the other procedures, but we're not doing that in this particular video, just looking at the stuff to secure this in the off position. Now just turning it off here isn't really good enough because somebody could come along and think, oh that's been turned off by mistake, and just turn it on again. Someone's working on the end of there, they get an electric shock and die. So clearly you need to have some way of fixing this in the off position so that people don't turn it on inadvertently. Now one particular way which is, seems to be fairly common and is completely unacceptable is that people seem to like to get bits of insulation tape and just sort of stick that over there like that and think that all is well. But the reality is this is a complete load of all crap. This is not an acceptable method of securing it in the opposition and quite frankly anyone who does that should be sacked off the site immediately and told never to return because completely useless. Anybody could just peel it off and uh, do whatever they like. So I need some other method of actually securing it in the off position permanently and that's where the proper equipment comes in. Now in this bag we have a lovely selection of equipment so let's just get all this business out of here. Some of this is fairly old, some of it's more up to date. And of course there's various types of this you can get as well. This is just a selection of ones that I happen to have some of. And uh, what we've got here then is a selection of the sort of things that you should have. Not necessarily all of these, but certainly some of them. And again, there may be things which aren't here which you may have. So let's uh, just have a quick look at what we've got then. These are essentially warning labels. On one side it says do not operate, and on the other side you can fill in your name and whoever you are. If it's in a domestic environment it's probably not desperately necessary to do that because you're the only person working there, but certainly in a larger installation, might be several people working there, then it's certainly important to provide that information. These are some kind of plastic material so you can actually write on them and then wipe it off again later and reuse them, so fairly economical. Next we've got the actual locks themselves, these are just padlocks, it says locked out, do not remove on there. And again you can put your name and things on the back should you want to. One feature of these padlocks is that when they're in the open position you can't take the key out. So the key is actually held in there when it's in the open position. You can only get the key out when it's locked. This is to prevent people taking the key out and not actually locking it, so just putting it through the uh, lock thing there and then running off with the key, leaving it and flapping open. So on these it has to be locked before you can remove the key. Obviously it's secured in position. And note that these are generally not the kind of key you can just pop down in the local shop and get 33 copies made. They're generally specific to this type of lock. So uh, that's a, a yellow one there. Some various colours which may be useful for places where there's lots of people working. So you can have a colour each or something. There's a little green one. And there's a blue one. Those are all the same sort of design. Of course the keys are not the same so the blue key does not fit in the yellow lock. And so on. And then we've got this red one here, which is a similar manufacturer design here, but slightly different. Same principle again though, you can't take the key out when it's unlocked, but when it is locked you can then take the key away. So uh, there's that one. Now what we've got here are a selection of things which will attach to a circuit breaker or a main switch in order so you can then uh, Put the padlock through. So we've got these little things here. There's a whole pile of those. They're generally for circuit breakers. And we've also got these plastic jobs here which uh, fit onto many different types of circuit breakers. Got a pin there you can tighten that down and then lock goes through here. Got a couple of them. And then there's also these sorts of things which have little pins on the end which uh, when this is slid it can retract the pins and it locks in. Again your padlock goes through the hole. A few different ones of those. And we've got these things which are sort of made of a metal body with a plastic bit. This clamps over the circuit breaker 
closes up and then your padlock goes through the hole there. A couple of those as well. Now this thing is basically a cable which you can pass through many things or a big large switch or something. Again, that locks together holes for the padlocks. And you can also get things similar to this where you can put in multiple padlocks. So if there was a whole load of people working on the system, they can each put their padlock in here. So you can only turn it on again once all of the people have unlocked it and confirm that it is actually safe. This is a rather flimsy plastic one, but uh, as I don't generally work in that type of environment, I uh, don't believe this has actually ever been used, but the principle is the same. You can get metal ones again of the similar purpose. So it just allows you to put multiple locks so that would basically go through one of those, and then you put your rack of padlocks on there. Now the general idea of these things is that you would uh, switch off the circuit you want, you would need to go and confirm that that was the correct circuit, and uh, then you need to attach one of the devices to this. Now this particular one is a load of old rubbish really, because most circuit breakers have a hole on either side, and that's essentially where something like this would go. So you would place those two prongs into the pins, there's a bit of uh, tension there, and then when you slide it closed, it forces those pins outwards so that it would remain locked in there, preventing the lever from moving. Because this is a load of junk made by British General, it doesn't have those, so we'll have to use something else. And uh, the idea with this style is that it will hook underneath the circuit breaker there. You can then turn this down, and then the pin in the middle basically grips onto the thing itself to grip onto the lever. That goes folds down and then you can put your padlock through the hole because that means you can't unscrew it without removing the padlock that would sort of fit over the front like that now unfortunately this doesn't fit on this uh, consumer either because it's a pile of gubbins and then we've got this style this is a similar deal essentially your circuit breaker lever goes in there tighten down the black uh, knob there and then when you close it it actually applies more pressure to the middle so clamps it in position closes up there and then your padlock goes through the hole so you can't actually reach the undoing screw and also it's obviously clamped on there so it's in position that doesn't fit there either and that's where these things come in these are quite useful for disastrous things like this so just a bit of metal hole at the top and there's a screw there and you do unfortunately need to use a screwdriver on these so basically in the off position that will fit over the lever like that go in the top there tighten up the screw and what's actually happening is that the screw is coming through there and actually gripping onto the circuit breaker lever. So I'll just put that one in that position there. So that's now on there so now you can't actually move the circuit breaker because that is securely fixed on there. Then you take your padlock or whichever colour you're using that passes through the hole there and then locks it in position. And the idea of the labels is that you put that around the padlock as well, so just slide that on there. Lock that in position. And they have the actual locked out arrangement, so can't move the circuit breaker lever. Padlock through there to secure in position, warning notice, and also your large warning notice as well there, making it abundantly obvious to anybody this has been disconnected and turned off for a reason. And of course to uh, Go that back again, you'll have the key. Just remove that from there. And then you can unscrew that and uh, return it to service once you've done all the necessary checks. Now as well as having this in place while you're actually working on the circuit, you can also leave these in place when you're not there, because say for example you were working on the circuit and it wasn't actually completed at the end of the day, you would need to leave this in position. That's where the thing on the back saying about who was working on it and uh, other information as well is useful. Because if you went, say, away at the end of the day and didn't come back, then uh, obviously they'd need to know who'd done that. So the circuit's not complete or there's some other problem with it. I just want to make sure that is turned off. And of course you can fit these to multiple circuits. So if, say, you were doing someone's kitchen or something, you may want to, uh, say, isolate more than one circuit. So you can uh, just put another one on there like that. And you can do as many as you want. You could also lock on the uh, RCD on this particular one, so that would do that group of three circuits there. So you may wish to uh, lock that one off as well. But uh, either way, the basic principles are the same. Now for multiple circuits, say all three of these, that's where this uh, cable job comes in. So rather than trying to fit a padlock through all three, which obviously won't work because it's not actually long enough, 
what you can do is just get this cable, shove that through all three there. And again, that prevents access to the screw to undo it. And then the deal with this is that the uh, end of the cable goes in the hole like that. And it goes through perfectly easily. And then when it's closed in that position there, padlock goes through here. Let's use this uh, blue one for that. And again, you can attach your warning notice and things as well. So that goes through there. So the padlock prevents this from being opened. And when this uh, cable is uh, in the position there and that's locked, you can't actually pull that out. It's securely locked in position. So uh, that's a way of doing multiple ones of those. Now removing this style is the reverse of putting them on. So remove the lock, just undo the little screw in there, and then you can remove it from the circuit breaker. They do leave a little dent in the actual plastic. Could have pointed it on, but uh, it's hardly a big deal, is it? It's just a small indent in the plastic. I'll just show you how some of these other ones work. This is the style with the two pins. So when it's in the open position there, the pins are fairly close together. And as you slide it, it pushes those two pins out and they can't just be pressed in again as there's a plastic bit inside which uh, forces them apart. So that sort of open there, see they're flush with the edge of the blue plastic. And then as it's pushed forward, pushes those further apart. And these are designed for decent circuit breakers which actually have holes in the side there. So the idea is those pins go into those holes. So when it's in the off position, if you put it through the two holes there, it will then prevent it from being moved to the on position. So just so uh, you can get it to go into this one. Of course, those British General uh, breakers don't appear to have holes, so they are clearly a load of old junk now. These can be a bit of a fiddle to get in position, but basically you see it's just through the hole there and the same on the other side, and then your padlock goes through that hole at the bottom, which of course prevents it from being opened, and then that is uh, pretty securely fixed onto that. And of course you can't then turn that on as this thing is locking it in position. And they're pretty sturdy. I mean, if you got hold of this and ripped it off, theoretically you could break that, hence the reason it has the warning notice there. And if you ever come across these and want the circuit turned on, you're going to have to go and find the person who actually put it there and find out why it's been turned off. Removing one of these that isn't yours is completely unacceptable in all circumstances, so uh, don't do it. This yellow one is similar, although it's slightly narrow at the top there for different widths of uh, pin spacing or whatever. And there's also this one, similar idea, but it comes in from the outside. Not particularly applicable with this style, but uh, they start out wide apart. And as you uh, close it up, so they actually come in, and then you can't actually move them apart. So similar to that, but of course uh, in reverse, may be useful for some applications. Now this uh, RCD here, you can see it does have the hole on both sides for that one. So a similar idea with the two pins there. Now this one is actually too wide to fit between, so that's where this thinner yellow one would fit there. And again, it's just a question of manoeuvring that into position there, closing that up, and then that's locked in position there so you can't then turn that on. And you can't obviously remove it once the padlock is in to get that disengaged. So similar concept there, a little pin on both sides. Now this style of one can be used with uh, various circuit breakers, it should fit onto this one. The idea here is you've got these two black plates and this uh, screw here will close up the gap between them. So idea with this one is you place it over the lever. It doesn't fit particularly well on this one, but we'll uh, just have a go with that. So it goes over the lever, turn that round until it is tight on the lever there, and then as you close it, this cam pit here will push the bottom plate up. Padlock then goes through the hole on the top. And then you can also lock that in place. And then because you've actually closed it, you can't get to the undoing screw there. And as the action of closing it presses it on the bottom, that is then pretty much well secured on the front. And of course it prevents you from turning the thing on. So again, that can be useful on certain types. Again, it's pretty uh, secured on there. Just another variation depending on the type of equipment that you've got. 
Now this red one is quite a lot larger, really designed for things like a main switch or whatever because it's obviously wider than most circuit breakers are. Similar principle to the metal ones in that you just turn this down until the thing is tightly secured and then this has got this fold away piece here and then once the lock is through there you can't then lift this up to undo the thing. Now this may fit onto this uh, main switch here. Let's just have a look, this uh, BG thing really is the most awful arrangement ever. But uh, essentially you uh, place that on there, tighten up the uh, fixing here, making sure it does actually grip onto the switch itself, fold that forwards, and then your padlock goes through. And then you can't actually move that into the position to undo it. And of course it prevents the main switch from being operated. That's what that looks like from the front there, so you can't actually move this up far enough to actually turn it. And again it prevents the switch from being moved to the on position there. So that's circuit breaker lockouts, and if you haven't got any of those then you need to go and get some right away, available from the usual suppliers. And so this where it starts there, worth getting a selection of types because you see there not all the types fit on all circuit breakers, particularly when they're nasty, cheap ones that were obtained from a dubious source. So uh, get a decent selection, and importantly remember to use these items, so if you're going to turn off a circuit to work on it, fit one of those on it every single time, because if you don't, then it's very likely someone just come along and turn it on, thinking it's just been turned off by mistake or whatever, and they want to make a cup of tea or something. And of course if you're on the end of that uh, working on it, and someone turned it on, could cause serious injury or even death, and bearing in mind it's your life that's being put at risk there, not anybody else's, so uh, make a bit of effort and uh, put the thing on there each and every time. Now that's it for this video, until next time, thanks for watching.